Thank you, Michael. Um, so I'm, I'm Andres, Andres Diaz Pinto. So I'm um, a research fellow of uh, at the University of King's College London. Um, um, so I'm also part of the London AI Center. Um, and today I'm, con I'm going to talk about Monai Label, so the project that I have been working for the last uh, month. Um, so it's important to say I'm talking about, uh, yeah, I'm talking on behalf of the Monai Label team. So this is a, this is a um, team group. Um, so it's a, it's a work a work group, sorry. Uh, so I'm talking about on behalf of the, all, the whole team. And this is a great collaboration between NVIDIA and King's College London. So this is the, the outline that I have for today. So I'm going to talk about what is Monai Label um, and the main highlight for, uh, for the second version of uh, Monai Label and, and, then, uh, and also the first one. Secondly, uh, I'm going to talk about what is, why to use Monai Label and why it's interesting, why we care about that. Um, and then um, I'm going to show you briefly how to create a Monai Label app. Uh, what is the, the data store that we have, we, we have support? Um, what is the heuristic planner, active learning strategies that we have for the second version of Monai Label? And then the, again, and I move to Scribble based segmentation, which is a very, very nice feature that we have for the second version of Monai Label. Um, I'm going to briefly show you how to create customized um, slicer modules that uh, also supports Monai Label. And then I'm finalized with the um, OHIF and Monai Label um, feature that we also have for the for the second version of Monai Label, right? Um, cool. So what is what is Monai Label? Uh, it's, it's an intelligent tool, right? That we created for facilitating a uh, annotation of three D medical images. Um, so it's a framework for developing a Monai Label apps. So you can do training and inference of deep learning models. Uh, this is one of the first, very first frameworks that introduces active learning strategies uh, in, in a software annotation setting. Everything is written in Python, can be installed with, the, with a simple pip install, pip install Monai label. And we support two viewers, so the 3D slicer and the OHI viewer, which is the, the web-based viewer. So I'm going to talk about more in detail about that in, 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 in the demo, right? So this is the, the structure that we have in, in, in Monai Label. So there are three main components. So the first one is the server where we host the different Monai Label apps. So there are different, say, approaches to annotate images. Two of those are uh, interactive. So one, one is the deep grow, the other one is the deep edit. So those two are interactive. The third one is an automatic segmentation method, so the standard one. So there is not, there is not interaction. And, and hopefully will be clear what, what I mean by interaction uh, later when I show the demo. Um, so this is, the, this is one of the main components, the server. The second important component is the viewer or the clients that we have support. So the first one is the 3D slicer. We have support to 3D slicer. I'm going to show you later what is, how the, the module in 3D slicer looks like. And the second one is the OHIF, which is, is going to be released in the second version of Monai Label. And it's a, it's a web-based uh, viewer, and it's based on Cornerstone.js. So this is the only, say, part that, that is different than Python. So it's, it's work is written in JavaScript. And the third important component is the where basically the studies or the data sets are, are located, right? So we support the Daikon web, which is an, a nice feature that also had in the second version of Monai Label. And the, say, if the researchers wants to use uh, a Monai label in the local computers, so they can basically pinpoint to the to the data set in in a folder in, in a yeah in a folder that is located in the local computer, right? Um, so what else is I want to show you here? So this is a yeah it's a server client system. So we have the server and, and also the viewers. Um, users or researchers can also use the the server only and make the REST API calls to the server instead of using the viewers, right? So that's, that's, that's also another option. Um, so wh why why we care about Monai Label? So why, why this is interesting? Um, so the main goal of a Monai Label uh, is to aim at two, say, personas. So one is the researcher that wants to create uh, new annotation methods. So uh, he or she wants to create new networks, new ways of training the networks. Say uh, he or she wants to create a prototype using different approaches that are available in Immonai. For instance, I want to implement the unit transformers in in Immonai label and and try and see how how it works in, in using the setup the the Monai label framework. Um, 
it also allows you to, to implement new active learning techniques. I'm going to late, later explain what is, what is an active learning technique. Make um, improvement to the current version of a Monai label apps. So I want to say use the deep grow or the automated, uh, automated segmentation method and make an improvement of that. So we can use this, those uh, and, and see how, how they work on, on our data sets. So that's the research perspective, right? From the clinician perspective, the only thing that I care is I want to spend less time and effort annotating images, right? And for that, Monai label group develops a 3D slicer and a heap viewer, right? So we can use either the 3D slicer in our local computers, right? Or in a server in any, in any place, right? Or we can use DOHIF if, uh, if the data sets are located in, in a sort of a PAC system or in a Daikon web server, right? I'm going to show you that more detail in, in later. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is how to create a Monai label app. There are two main ways. So the first one is uh, I start from scratch. I create my, my own network, my own transformations that I want to apply to the, uh, to the images that I have, right? So I want to do is sort of a data augmentation uh, is already developing my, or, or, or I already develop in a different, in say framework. And I develop everything from scratch. So this, this is one way and put it into in, in the Monai label. The other say um, easy way will be like copy an, an existing sample app from the Monai label app, Monai label, uh, sorry, repository. So we have, at the moment, we have like, like five uh, sample apps. Uh, those, those apps follow the same, the same pattern. So we have deep grow apps, deep edit apps, and the, say, the automatic ones that are, that are based on, on, on a flavor of unit, on a version of the unit, right? So that's the, the second way. We copy or clone one repository, one, one, one of those apps, and start improving on, on or modify that, um, say, apps. So what we can what we can change from, from those apps. So we can change the again the transformation that we apply to the images, the intensity transformation, the spatial transformations. We can define a new active learning technique for our, our application. We can redefine the network that we are using for those. Um, and in case, for instance, if I, I want to work on interactive annotation methods, so instead of using clicks or using scribbles or using ROIs, I, I want to use closed curves, right? So I uh, if a slicer allows me, I can I can define the closed curve, send to the server, right, to the Monilo server, preprocess that as uh, uh, as I want, and and then um, send the mask to the to the client again. So I can basically it's very customizable. We can modify anything in the in the in the app, and Monilo able supports that as well. Okay, so there are more information in the tutorials in the in the repository. So I invite you to to check that and and and, and try the, the the apps that we have available. So this is the structure of the of the current uh, Monai label apps. So we have two important things here. So one is the uh, main main class that is inherited from the Monai label app, right? In 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 this case, so let me see if um, so. I use the I want to use the pointer. Okay, okay. So I have the uh, main class, right? So the main um, class that I inherit from Monai Label App. And in this class, I define the network. I define the hyperparameters for training and inference. For instance, the number of epochs, the validation split that I want to have for the, for the training process. In, in also in, in this class, I instantiate the train and the inference objects, okay? And those objects uh, come from the library that I have for this folder, right? So in this folder, I have two important classes. So the infer class and the train class. In the infer class, I inherit, so it's a class that is inherited from the, from the infer task. And in there, I define the type of inference. So if I want to do patch-based inference or say simple inference, um, whether I want to use an automatic, an automatic or an interactive infer task, right? And of course, I define the inference transforms that I want to apply to the, to the model. In the train class is, uh, is similar. So it defined the, the, the validation speed. If I don't want to use a, say, a standard validation speed, I want to use an, a different data set as, as validation. So I can define my, my, my dictionary or my data set there in this class, in, train, in the train class. 
I also define the training transformation, so the data augmentation that I want to apply to the to the images during training. Um, and of course, if there, there is a sort of interaction um, during the training process, because I want to use, um, say, an interactive way of training the images, training the, the models, sorry. Um, so I define the interaction class there as well. And the handlers, of course, if, if I want to use TensorBoard or any sort of uh, handlers to visualize the images or to visualize the, the loss function or anything, so I, uh, there, is, there is a space for to, to define those there. Um, so the transforms and the active learning um, classes are empty here. So this is a space for the users to implement the, their, their own active learning techniques and their own transforms. So when I say empty, it's um, empty for this class. So we have supported, we have now implemented a couple of active learning techniques in, in the MoniLabel um, Moni um, repository. Um, but again, if, if the user wants to use um, the, their own active learning technique, so they, they can implement it here in the active learning script or use the uh, existing ones, right? The same for the transform. So we have like in, in Monai, there are like a hundred transforms that you can use for intensity or special transformations. Um, but in, in the case that you don't, don't find your own transformation or the transformation that you want to apply, you create your own and place it in, in, the, in the transform script. So this is the, the say, structure of the Monai label app. So we have, for instance, the DPED, we have the lib um, folder and also the main, main script. So there is also the requirements file, uh, just in case you have other libraries that you want to use for, for, these, for these sort of uh, apps. Um, okay. Okay, so we have a, this is strange. I don't want to, um, okay. So this is, uh, okay, this is important. If I want to use say Monai label in our, in our say local machine. So there is a question, how, how we organize the data set? So there is, there is a missing figure here, but essentially, so I create a folder, place my images. So I say I have 20 images, 30 images. I put my images in, in the folder that I create, right? And if, if I have labels, so I create a folder called labels, right? All small letters. And inside that folder, I put a, another folder, which is final and put my, my labels there, right? <clears throat> so I have um, um, a tree of folders where the root is where the images are located. If I have labels, there is a folder called labels. Inside label, there is final. And inside final, there, is the, there are the, the um, labels that I have. In the case I don't have label, I just put the, the images in, in, the, in the root folder and that's it, right? So that's the, the way I create my, my, my data store. So it's important to um, call the labels uh, with the same name that we have in the, in the images. So it, for instance, a Splint 2 is the name, the name of the images. Um, Splint 2 will be this, the name of the label. So in that case, the Monai label will recognize that there is a label for, for that uh, image, right? Okay, this is this is a, a nice feature that we have now in the in the second version of Monai, Monai label, which is the heuristic planner, and these algorithms basically reads the spacing of the of all the training data set, that we, all the trained images that we have, reads this the special size, the special size, all the special sizes, uh, checks the available GPU memory, and based on the distribution of the intensity distribution of all the images. The output of that algorithm is the are the hyperparameters to the training and, and inference transforms, right? So it defines the size of the images, defines the intensity transformation that I want to apply, right? And um, it performs also the sanity checks just in case um, there are images that are broken or or, or there are say multimodality images that shouldn't be there in the data set. So it will warn the user there are something wrong in the data set. So this is the heuristic learner. Um, with regard to the active learning strategies, so just just to clarify, we are in the same in the same um, uh, page. An active learning is is, is a is sort of a semi-supervised machine learning approach that uh, basically choose images right that are the most harder one or the difficult ones, so the user can um, um, say, say um, segment. 
to later train, right? So let me let me explain better this. So we have say we have a bunch of unlabeled images, right? And we want to build a training um, a training pool of training set of images, right? So initially we select randomly an image, and let's say I'm a clinician, so I select randomly an image, annotate the image, right? So now I have a one image and one label. So I start the training process, right? And when I have a pre-trained model, so I can ask the active learning strategy, say ask or the active learning strategy will send me the most uncertain image or the images that are harder to the model to segment, right? So we rank the images as the most difficult, as the less difficult, and then send to the Oracle, send to the expert to annotate the image. So in that case, we, we train, we create a training pool that is a, better for the model to train or faster for the model to train right um there is another thing another nice thing about the monai label which is the the scribble uh, base uh, segmentation tool um just just uh, i mean scribble is, an, is a is a free freehand line drawings so you say just a, a a line that we draw with the yeah with the tools that we have in the viewer right and based on those on those scribbles on those uh, lines that we create uh, we can segment an image right uh, very quickly um so we can use those um, segmentations to train the model in the background so i'm going to show you very 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 quickly in the demo that i'm i'm, I'm going to present uh, after this presentation uh but yeah so now monai label supports scribbles based segmentation there are there are different base there are different say algorithms for for scribble segmentation i'm going to show you the, the the simple one that we can use for for call start right um okay so this is this is also interesting in this in the case that we don't have we don't find a say the interaction or the a feature that mm, that we are finding in monai label so we can we also have the the freedom i mean the flexibility of uh, creating a um, customized uh, slicer modules so in this case um, for the second version of Monalabel, label we create the scribbles uh, base annotation tool right and you can interact with the with the slicer to annotate the images right but the, say i want to use instead of scribbles i want to use a um, closed curve or i want to use any or points in in a different way or or ROIs or anything, right? That is available in Slicer, but it's not available in the in the user interface created by Monai Label. So I can customize that. I can easily modify it and 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 customize it to my application. Um, this is just a, a printed screen showing that the that uh, how OHIF is working in Monai Label. I'm going to show how so how we can use Monai Label and OHIF uh, using the Daikon Web uh, uh, server. Um, and yeah, so this is this is the, the the thing that we have now. So for the for the short demo, I, I think we have still have time, right? At, at least ten minutes. Yes, a bit, a bit. Okay. So for the for the demo, I'm going to show you three scenarios. So let's say I only have a a bunch of images with no labels. I don't have any labels, right? So I can use Monai label to start the annotation process. So I start the app, uh, use the segmentation based on scribbles, and Started the the training process in the background, right? I can do that. So that that will be the, the first scenario. So I create easily creation of a, a masks based on scribbles, and use those masks to train my 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 model, the model that I I have in in my app. So the scenario two is I have a pre-trained model. So after providing three, four, five labels using the scribbles, or because my data set already contains different labels. So I can use those labels to train the deep edit app or any app that I want in the in Monai label. Um, so the thing is the scenario two, I have a P3 model. So I, I'm going to show you how you can use the deep edit to interactively modify the, the masks, perform inference using Monai label, and how we can use the active one of the active learning strategies available in Monai label. And the third scenario is to use basically OHIF and the Daikon web server to uh, interact with the Daikon web server, uh, segment the images using a pre-trained model, and, and for that I'm going to use Orthanc as the Daikon web server. Okay. So before I conclude, so let me go to the. Um, so I'm going to show the scenario one, right, in the in the case that I don't have any labels. So I start my my. Um, so before let me let me 
Let me explain what I'm doing here. So here I'm specifying that I'm using the Deep Edit app, right? So I'm using the one of the sample apps that are available in Monai Label. So it's Deep Edit, and I'm specifying the data set that I have in in my computer, right? So I'm saying and so minus A is for the for application and minus S is for study, okay? Studies. So I start the app by specifying the app that I want to use and the images that I'm, I'm using. So the, for those that are not familiar with Slicer, so this is how Slicer looks like. So when, when you download the, the Slicer, so you will see this. Let's, let's say I already installed Monai Label here, but let's say you haven't installed Monai Label. So if I go to a view extension manager, right? And search for active learning here. So you can see Monai Label, uh, uh, there, so you can install it. And once you install it, it will ask you to restart the slicer. So once you restart the slicer, you will see this, right? And this icon of my label. So this is uh, the user interface for um, for Monai label, right? And here you specify the IP where the uh, Monai label server is, is up and running. So in this case, because I everything is in my, in my local computer, so I just click here, right? to connect to the uh, local Monai label server. But if I don't have Monai label server local, I can just specify the IP and, and it will connect. So now I see that it's, it is connected because this uh, bottom is now activated. So you can see the strategy for uh, active learning. So we have two, either random or first. Why? Because we don't have any pre-trained model. We don't have any labels, right? We, we want to use Monai label to annotate the Im images. So we also have um, here the scribbles, so it's not activated unless we fetch the image. But let's say we fetch the image, we fetch, take an image, right? And randomly we'll select a, one of the images that I have unlabeled. So I have the a CT image and say, I want to annotate the, the spleen. I'm working to on annotating the spleen. So in this case, if I want to use scribbles, uh, the first thing to do is to specify the ROI. So say, this is the middle of the spleen and more or less, this is the, the spleen, right? So specify in scribble. So you say this is spleen, this is spleen, right? And this is also spleen. So once I provide three hand lines, so I can update my um, my algorithm based on scribbles, right? And I get a, a nice segmentation of the of the spleen. But let's say uh, there is still more work. So I need to. Um, continuously um, improve the, the segmentation. Say after several iterations, to say this is also part of the, say, let me, uh, ah, this, this looks nice. But yeah, let's say uh, after several iterations of using scribbles, I'm very happy with the, with the mask. So I submit the label. And once I submit the label, right, in the background, the training process will start. So in this case, I have only one, mask right one uh, i have more images but i only have one label that i just provide to the server so in the background the training process started and i can um, continue with the next segmentation with the next image so i fetch the next image and again it will fetch the uh, images randomly so in this case it will fetch the 46 right um say i want to annotate again the the spleen very quickly so i provide the the roi so let me search the image here. So this is the spleen. Search the ROI, right? Middle of the spleen. And say, okay, this is the this is part of the spleen, right? This is part of the spleen. This is part of the spleen. So I update the um, um, my scribble algorithm. And say, okay, this is this needs more work. So I span the. This is the part also the of the of the spleen. But let me first increase the ROI, right? So I update the model, I update the uh, scribble um, algorithm, right? But it, will, it took more more uh, more than than say this is part of the background. Uh, this is not part of the uh, of the spleen. So say after a couple of iterations, I'm, I'm happy with the with the mask generated by the scribbles. So again, I submit the label, and what will happen is when I submit the second label, the training process that was happening in the background will stop and restart with two images now. Right? So I have two images and two labels. 
Okay. So this is set to train for 50 epochs, but of course we can change that, right? So we can change in the configuration of the of our, of our app. We can change the number of epochs. We can change the, the split for for validation. We can change all the hyperparameters during the training process. By default, it's 50. So this is the first scenario. We are creating labels. So you can see um, if I go to demo scenario uh, one, so I create uh, two masks, right, for the spleen nine and the spleen 46, OK? So this is for, for scenario one. Let's say the clinician um, um, already spent some time annotating five, six, seven images. And she or he gets tired and, and, and went to have a coffee or have dinner and leave the training process there after having six, uh, seven images annotated. Uh, so he or she come back and, and continue the work. So let's say I'm going to the, to the scenario two, right? I'm gonna stop this um, Monai label up and use the scenario two. So this is scenario two. In this case, I have, uh, in the scenario two, I have six labels, right? Because I already spent some time annotating images and I have in the final, I have, yeah, six labels because I already provide that and, and also a pre-trained model, right? So in this case, I'm going to connect to the, to the um, uh, server again, and I can see the number of images that I have annotated. So, uh, so I have six images annotated out of 32 images that I have in my data set. So in this case, I will, I'm going to fetch the sample, right? Again, I'm using the random strategy and because I have a pre-chain model, this button is activated now, so I can run the inference, right, to see how the model is performing. So say uh, it will take some minutes. So in the background, it was, it's performing the pre-transforms, so the transformations that are applied before uh, feeding the image into the network, right? And then the post-transform, which is the, the in reinverting the um, transformation that I applied in the beginning. And then I, I, I got the, a, a nice cementation of the spin after training the model for a couple of hours with six to 10, to 10 samples. So let's say uh, this, is, um, this is not perfect. This is not 100% good. So I, either I can use manual tools that are available in, 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 in a slicer, or I can use my deep edit model, which allows me to provide clicks and say, so this is part of the background. This is not part of the, of the foreground. So I applied a, I provide a click to the model and it will remove, ideally, it will remove mm, the, the bit that is part of the background. So you see, um, so every time that I provide a background click, the, the mask change, right? And maybe this is not perfect, so it needs more training, right? So in that way, I can modify the mask. And once I'm happy with the mask, right, I can submit the label, right? And when I submit the label, the thing that I'm doing is I'm happy with the mask, please fine tune the model, right? And in this case, instead of uh, five, it, use, it uses six and one for validation, right? So that's, that's, that's the, say, the deep edit uh, power here working. But now let's say I want to use an active learning strategy. So let's say uh, I want to use the epistemic uncertainty as, a, as an active learning strategy. So I can use, I can modify the, the flag here. So instead of using, uh, so instead of false, I, I, I'm going to say, I'm, I, I want to use the epistemic um, uncertainty to sort the unlabeled images. So instead of randomly selecting images, the model, the active learning strategy will select the harder ones. So the clinician can segment those and create more impact on the training process of the model, right? So let me start the, oh, sorry, this is scenario two. So this is the one that I need to modify. <laughs> so this is epistemic, so I modify here too. Save the model, restart. Okay, now, so reload, reconnect, and um, what is in the strategies, I now have a habilitated epistemic um, uncertainty computation. So if I select what I, I select that, when I, the first thing, when I, when I say, true in the active learning strategy in the background automatically my model because there is a pre-trained model my model will start to compute the uncertainty for all the unlabeled images and it's going to sort or rank the unlabeled images by the most uncertain one to the less uncertain one to the model right so in this case the spleen eight 
is is already it already has the entropy computation or the the, or the uncertainty right so in this case uh, spleen nine has a bigger value so if i fetch the model if i fetch an image it should fetch the number nine in this case so it fetch the number nine right because it's the most uncertain one according to the model at least to the ones that uh, the model already compute right uh, because this is the most uncertain one so i can use scribbles or i can use uh, my pre-trained model so i perform inference on the model right and modify the label if i'm happy with the label i'll just submit the label or if i'm not happy modify the label and submit the label so the the model will continue the training process okay so so this is a slicer working with active learning strategy um, this is deep edit this is this is scribble scribble based uh, segmentation tools and now i'm going to move to the um, last part of the demo which is the ohif working with a monai label so in this case instead of uh, providing a path to the folder i'm going to put to provide the IP address where my Daikon web server is located. So in this case, everything is local, right? Um, so I have in the in my local host on the port 8042, my Daikon web server. So you can see here uh, in, my, in my computer. So if I connect to that, you can see all the participants that I have in my, in my Daikon web server. So all those are uh, Daikon images, all are this, my, my studies, right? So I'm going to specify, I'm going to use deep edit, the scenario two, where I have a pre chain model and the, say my, my studies. So I start the app and this is very important. So Monai label comes with a pre-built OHIF, uh, OHIF viewer, but you need to execute this uh, couple of uh, commands, so specifically this one, so build.sh in order to build the OHIF viewer. So once you build the OHIF viewer, so you just go to the um, uh, local host, right? So in the local host, you can see the different REST APIs that uh, we have available in the Monai label server. So for this, we use Fast API. Uh, yeah, so you see the, the REST API calls to perform inference, to perform batch inference, to, to, to start a training process, the active learning techniques, the different scoring strategies that we have as active learning techniques. Um, different REST API calls for the data stores so to get access to the unlabeled images, the label images, all the images, everything, right? And in order to start OHIF after, this is important, after building OHIF with the command, this build.sh. So you can, um, uh, yeah, we can go to the OHIF forward slash OHIF, right? Uh, in, in that, you can see the same images that I have in my Orthanc or in my da Daikon web server, okay? So say I want to annotate this image that doesn't have any labels, any segmentation. So I click on the image and it will show me the, um, the image in the, in, the, in the browser, right? So there is uh, uh, this sort of, oh, okay. I say, why is that slow? Because it's computing the epistemic in the background. <laughs> right, so it's, it's, it's computing the epistemic uncertainty for all the unlabeled images, right? And um, when I fetch an image, when I click fetch image, it will fetch the most uncertain one. But anyway, so this is this is OHIF working here. So say I want to, there are many things here, but let's say I want to flip the image. I want to uh, also change the uh, contrast of the image so I can see better the organs. Um, so we have this uh, unlabeled, unlabeled sample. Here on the top right, you can see Monai label, right? So I start Monai label, I connect OHIF to the Monai label. So you can see that I'm using deep edit, right? And say I want to segment this spin. So I run the segmentation, uh, uh, running the auto segmentation. And the, in this case, this is running the epistemic and also the <laughs> inference of the image. So now that we uh, perform inference, you can see the segmentation here of the, uh, of the spleen. But let's say this is not, this is not good this is not this is part of the background so i activate my smart editing so i can provide clicks so when i click it means a uh, foreground but when i hold control click this is part of the background and because this is part of the background i'm going to provide a click here so it performs inference there so it's performing inference using the click that i provided right and it will remove that bit okay 
So let's say I want to fetch the next image. So the next sample, it will use the, the sort of um, the sorting that I did, right? With the epistemic uncertainty. And, and according to this, the number 13 is the most uncertain one. So again, uh, I connect to the Monai label, uh, run the inference, right? So we perform inference on this image. And you should get the spleen cementation here. So now, because the, the model is, is well trained, you, you know, you got very, very good cementations. But uh, yeah, let's flip this and see better here. So this is also part of the background. Uh, yeah, I need to activate the smart editing, right? Um, yeah, so it will modify the mask according to the to the points that I'm providing. Um, okay, so this is uh, this is my presentation. So it's just to conclude, um, is everything is open source. So please go there and uh, and check the 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 all the features that we have available. Scribble, deep learn, uh, deep edit, uh, everything that is in Monai can be used there in Monai label, of course. So we have a, a Monai label, which is an open source project that facilitates annotation of 3D medical images. Um, Monai label is one of the very first frameworks that introduces active learning strategies in a software annotation setting. Right. So at the moment we have two strategies, and and we'll, we will add more strategies as as we um, improve this this repository, this project. So uh, future work will be uh, multimodality support. So at the moment we only support a single modality. Uh, the idea is also to host, so the server can host multiple apps, not only one app. So in the beginning, you need to specify the app, but the idea is to host more, multiple apps in the server. And, and of course, uh, leverage uh, the information that we can get from the unlabeled data. So the idea is to also include self-supervised learning and unsupervised learning algorithms in Monai label. Uh, I think this is pretty much, Michael. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Andres. Uh, there are, I know we're slightly over time because we were behind kind of in general, but I want to at least get you a few questions. There was a lot of questions that came in. Um, some of them you did answer because I think you mentioned multi-modality that's coming up. Um, what about multi-user? Uh, so some people asked, uh, in my case, many clients are connecting to the same server. How to split the data evenly? How do they measure and version the consensus if two users annotate the same volume? So just generally multi-user support if you want to talk about that. Yeah, so th this is something that we are we are uh, considering at the moment. There is not there is no support for multi multi user. Uh, but again, this is this is uh, something that we need to discuss as a, as a group as a community. So if that's something that is is mm, pressing or is needed, um, we will we will work work on that and in the next uh, releases. But yeah, at the moment there is not there is no support for multi multi users uh, because we need to. To deal with every, I mean, all the things that you mentioned. So the the if there is annotations, multiple annotation for a single image, we need to organize how we uh, say keep the record of all the annotations for for the same image. How we keep information of the users if there are sort of a, a, a say a, how how is authentication of the users, right? So there is there is not a, a, so. The, the idea is to organize the users and also the, the the labels that the user are providing. So it's a bit it's a bit of a it's not trivial, uh, but it's something that we are considering. And if if the community says that this, I mean, we as a community say that this is important, we will work on that indeed. Yeah, makes sense. I know one question that came up was what version of Slicer do you need? There is a preview release version of Slicer that you need to use to get the extension and the extension working. I know we've had a few people have issues when they go through because that's sort of a regular build cadence for that preview release. So sometimes there's issues with it. If you have issues with it, go through and try to download either a previous version or if you wait a day or two, um, it might fix it. But we had someone where their, their extension, uh, they couldn't even find the extension even in the preview release. So just know that about yes. 3D Slicer if you are using Slicer. Um, okay, a few other ones. Someone asked, does this come with a Python uh, interface if we wanted to integrate this into their own Python based viewer. Yes, yes, of course. The only the only thing that I need to do is uh, again, so let me let me briefly show that. So you can so let's say I'm I'm using the uh, Monai label server um, locally. So I'm using the uh, um, my the, I'm using a folder where the images are located. So I'm I'm not using the Daikon web, but just for simplicity, you can use both. Right. So once you start the label, the Monai label server, you can see the different calls here. 
you can see the different calls. So you can use the Python, your Python viewer and make the REST API calls, right? You can use the library request or the, any library that, to, that make the calls to the monolabel server. So there is not an issue with that. So for instance, if I say, I, I want to start the training process here. So I basically start the, um, try it out, right? And execute. So this means I, I'll, uh, the, in the background, I will start the training process, right? So that's the only thing that you need to do, right? So make the, the REST API call, either using 3D Slicer, OHIF, or any viewer that you support, any viewer that you have in, in Python, C++, anything, right? So it's pretty flexible in, in, that, in that bit. OK, yeah, great. Um, so we'll do one more question. So this is kind of a combination of a few different ones. People were asking about sort of active learning. How does it know which images are harder? Are there sort of certain models or, or um, algorithms that are implemented there and available to use in the background for active learning? Could you just briefly talk a little bit more about that again? Yeah, so th this is a very, very good question. So is that, in fact, it, 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 that question, I mean, it's, it's an open question. How do you sort the images as the most difficult one and the less difficult one? So in this case, we are using uncertainty. So we compute the uncertainty provided by the model and provided by the data set that we have. So there are two, like the epistemic uncertainty and the aleatoric uncertainty, right? So we are using those um, methods to compute uncertainty. And based on the uncertainty, we sort the, we sort the images. We rank the images. So that's the strategy that we're using. And again, uh, this is a platform that allows you to integrate more, more active learning strategies. So we are not saying that this is the, the only ones that we are implementing or the, or the best one to, to use for segmentation, right? You can use any, any sort of a ranking system or active learning strategy for the user to use. Um, yeah, so it's an open problem, how you rank the most difficult ones. Yeah. In this case, we're using uncertainty, basically. Okay, great. Um, so I did see some questions come in on Zoom only, I think. So if you ask it in Zoom, please go over and ask it in Discord. It's a lot easier to kind of thread off of your questions in there and to get things answered. But I think there's probably at least five to 10 more questions, Andres, over in Discord. <laughs> um, lots okay. of interest over there. So I encourage the conversation to continue over there. And Andres, great presentation. Thank you again. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Yeah.